This video contains information about sexual assault. Please use good self-care while watching and or listening to this video. Good morning. Welcome. Hi there. So we, my name is Megan Cosman and I'm a court and victim advocate at the North Star Advocacy Center. We were formerly called Children and Family Center, but now we're North Star Advocacy Center. <laughs> And I'm Julia Day. I'm a victim advocate and volunteer coordinator at the North Star Advocacy Center. So I supervise all volunteers and interns as well as do victim advocacy. So for those of you who don't know, the North Star Advocacy Center, which as Megan said, was formerly the Children and Family Center, is an advocacy center for anyone who had been through or is currently going through domestic violence or sexual violence. So Megan, now that our viewers know a little bit about us, why don't you tell them a little bit about what's going on right now? Yeah, so we decided to put um, this show, if you will, together. Um, honestly, because we're trying to figure out Zoom and as we're kind of figuring out all of its features, we're just like, oh wow, it can record and maybe we can develop some kind of show. Because we are um, want, trying to let people know that we're still um, available, we're still out there, people can still um, receive our services and so I know that we're just wanting to um, you know stay out there and be also be putting good stuff out there positive stuff out there um, amongst all of the troubled times that we're going through right now with the virus and everything so that is the goal behind this show um, in true North Star fashion we don't have a title for it yet <laughs> and so we're still thinking of some stuff but we did want to go ahead and get started with it all because um, again we just wanted to contribute to positive things going out there and we hope that we're the goal is to have a show up for you um, at the beginning of every week and so um, tune in again next week because we'll have um, another show and hopefully each week we'll, we will be able to have a guest on it um, so hopefully most shows there will be a guest on here um, because part of an advocate's responsibility is to um, provide and link people to different resources in their community and so um, the first guest that we are going to have um, this morning is Catherine Hawley she is the health educator at the Nottoway County Health Department. Um, she's had a, she has a tremendously busy job um, anyway, but here in the past, in the past month or so, um, it has been exceptionally difficult. So um, we just really appreciate everything that she and her colleagues are doing for us and for the community, for the county. So um, is there anything else before we uh, let Catherine in here? Um, well, I think we just want to give a quick shout out to our clients and say that we all are still here for you and yeah, our services, we can still help you. Please call our 24-7 hotline An intern or volunteer will have that and we would love to talk with you um, and we still have our online support groups going on um, and let us know if you're not in one, if you would like to be in one. Yep. Cool. So with that, and also we wanted to feature our mugs that we're drinking out of, because originally one of the titles was going to be about our coffee mugs. So Julia, what are you drinking this morning? I am drinking out of my See the Good mug, um, Peach Perfect Tea. Yeah. <laughs> I am drinking out of this really fun mug. I like this mug. It's probably one of my favorites because it's square. And I actually <laughs> won this um, at... Through, um, through a raffle at our, um, MC, our Missouri Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence conference. Um, it used to be an annual conference and now it's um, every other year. So I won this through a raffle and I am, I just, I squeeze lemonade, like real lemons and um, I have real lemonade. And so that's what I'm drinking this morning. Um, I did that last week. You squeeze lemon, hard. your own lemonade? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. It's, it reminds me of summer. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go ahead and bring Catherine in. Awesome. Let's see how this works. Hey there. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Julia. Hi, Megan. Hello. How are you this morning? Doing great. Awesome. Awesome. In hand. Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, it's <laughs> Oh, Catherine. Well, welcome to our first show. Thank you. 
can you just start off by telling um, us and our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure, sure. My name is Katherine Hawley. I'm a registered nurse and health educator at the Nottoway County Health Department. How did you get into this line of work? <laughs> uh, about 20 years ago, uh, my husband and I moved, my husband's from this area. Anyway, we moved back here, raised our kids here. Um, originally, when we first moved back, I started looking at job prospects. I had a master's degree in communication, undergraduate in public relations, as well as communication, and then um, couldn't find much work around here at that time. So I started looking around, had an opportunity to take some classes, went back to school, got a BSN in nursing, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> went, worked on the hospital floor, then to the clinic settings, then to pediatric clinic, clinic setting, and then um, heard about an opportunity here three and a half years ago. So interviewed and I was fortunate enough to get it. So I'm, I'm very, very excited that I'm actually here um, in a very unusual time at this present. Time, right? Yeah. So speaking of which, um, what is the health department's response to COVID-19? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, the health department, um, you know, our focus is to protect, promote, and prevent. And COVID-19, although new to all of us, what the health department is doing, we're actively trying to get messaging out to the public in a timely manner. And we're relying on recommendations from our, from the state, as well as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, and as far as our little health department, there's about five of us, five full-time people here. Um, you know, we have a communicable disease nurse um, who is keeping a watchful eye on COVID-19, any changes, progressions, um, we also are doing normal business procedures um, as much as we can. For example, women, infants, and children clinic. Uh, we're doing everything via the phone right now. Um, and then we also have an environmental specialist who handles everything under the sun, basically. But basically, you know, food, food establishments, sanitation, and other environmental concerns. Um, but yeah, so it's a new experience for all of us this COVID-19 and we're all making adaptations. But I will say also, you know, in order to keep the messaging out there on our Facebook page, we keep things active. So if you're curious as to, you know, new recommendations or changes or whatever, Facebook page is, and it's, um, you know, just the Nottoway County Health Department Facebook page. And then another great site would be, um, our uh, website, not only publichealth.org website, and that has all kinds of recommendations under the sun. So you that are very prominent and active going on right now, as well as health awarenesses too. But um, COVID nineteen is really more predominant this month out there. So. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we can put a link um, to the Nottoway County Health Department's Facebook page and the website in this video. Oh, that would be great. So then oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So I know that every, like you're consumed, you and your coworkers are just consumed with like keeping on top of the virus and everything like that. Um, but I was, I've actually been working with you prior to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, sexual assault prevention and um, for those of you who don't know, um, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and so that's um, um, something that's really important to us, obviously, with because mm -hmm. we're a dual domestic and sexual violence shelter, and so we definitely want to be raised, keep raising awareness about sexual assault and sexual violence as well. So, um, Catherine, would you mind talking about the team that you started and um, sure. just what you've been doing, and just all of the some of the um, findings that you found by going around to the community and and talking about sexual assaults. Absolutely. Um, I'll back up and just start with it. It's actually started with a grant and the grant was called uh, Sexual Violence Free Communities Planning Grant. And the grant's just basically an opportunity to bring people together, um, work on a prevention type plan with the prevention focus being a community level focus. Um, so with that said, um, there are a group of us that meet once a month, as well as those who can't meet, communicate through me, and I bring that information to the committee. 
Um, and those people include community members, community, community members who, um, who want their voice heard. And that's what's the beauty of this group is that uh, we take information from members of Nottoway County and we've done it through a survey actually. I've taken the survey so many places um, for a good month and a half and um, really have some good input. But basically how much awareness is out there about sexual violence in Nottoway County. Um, and so far we're finding out people, people want to know more and want to know more different aspects um, that relate to sexual violence. Um, so, but yeah, basically right now, our, our monthly committee consists of um, Nottawa County Health Department, North Star, um, Northwest Health Services, mm -hmm. Northwest Missouri State University, several representatives from there, as well as uh, community members that can attend at that time. And like I said, those who cannot, um, correspond via email or I just go out and speak to various groups that want me to bring that information back. So that's what we're doing and so far this is a work in progress. We have a basically we're presenting a plan to the state. The state will review it and then we'll just see what happens. But right now we're, we're a work in progress. But we're, doing, we're doing great and it's a really great team and I'm and it's a, it, and it's a, it's a good focus. Sexual violence is a topic that sometimes people never talk about. What is, could, would you mind sharing some of the findings sure. that the survey? Because I know you've gone to different communities and um, and shared with yeah. uh, share the survey with the yeah. survey. Right. What we're finding is that information in different pockets of Nottoway County different needs are different. So, mm -hmm. so what uh, puts a challenge to the, the committee and the whole community too is what do you need in your area? You know, um, information um, is shared differently in different environments. And you're finding people like want to know about sexual assault and they- They want to know, but maybe they don't want to know where the outlets are. Maybe they want to know what is considered inappropriate touching. I mean, right. regards yeah. to wrapping your arm around a um, person. It's, it sounds silly, but at the same time, it's not silly. It's, it's really big of somebody to ask that, say, is that going to offend somebody? Yeah. If I'm male and I do that to a female, you know, good question, really. Mm -hmm. so. So there is a resounding theme of like people want to know more. It just it just varies on what people want to know more about. Some it's resources. Some it's like well, what? How is consent defined, or how is sexual assault defined? Um, and then right. others just yeah. And so that's it's. I think and, it's, it's good research you've been doing so far. Yeah, and, and on some of those uh, some of those questions, um, people can put a comment, and have had several comments of don't blame the victim. You know, don't blame, and I'm not sure victim is the correct terminology to even use in that, but don't blame the person that the sexual violent act happened to. Yeah, you're trying to essentially, um, or, or we are trying to essentially um, move towards a culture change in the way that we look at sexual mm -hmm. assault and sexual assault victims and um, influence in the way the community responds to it um, and, and the way yeah, just how the community responds to it. So I think it's, I think it's great. And a lot of those might be social norms, breaking down what yeah. considered social norms and really opening up that discussion. But really, how do you do that? And that's the challenge for the committee. <laughs> that's, that's, it's tough. It's tough, yeah. but it's workable. And um, I think it's possible. It's just a matter of putting it together and breaking it down. No, I think you're exactly right. Conversations about you know, societal norms, the stigmas, um, and not necessarily like in an attacking way, because I think there's a lot yes. of things that people have that they're going to offend someone or mm -hmm. just honestly, like our political climate, we, it's hard, I think, for our country to have serious conversations about things without it turning into a fight. But mm -hmm. I, you know, us as professionals and um, other people in just our area, like, um 
starting those conversations with um, not necessarily coming out in like an attacking form, but just yeah. wanting to bring information and knowledge and just hear the other person and hear why, you know, people choose the terms they use or why they think um, just certain thoughts. And so then we can share why we use these terms and why we think the thoughts that we think. Right, that's a great point. So, so getting, I was just thinking as you were talking, that would be in messaging, like getting information out to the different cities within Nottoway County, getting the information of what is or what is not appropriate um, and why, not just because that's it's inappropriate, just why is that, you know? Right. Getting, um, yeah, information out there as well as information on um, how to address that as well as um, numbers to call. Mm -hmm know about I we talked about fight flight freeze or fawn mm -hmm. that remind mm -hmm. me what that was do you remember Megan yeah yeah um and yeah, Julia definitely um helped me out because one of the things that um Julia and I do together through North Star Advocacy Center for our interns and our volunteers is we do a training called sexual violence 101 or SV 101 and we um, talk about just kind of the basic information of sexual assault and what we feel pretty strongly about what we want our volunteers to start off knowing before they start volunteering with us. Um, and one of those things is the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. And I think that as a, as a community, as a world, we are more familiar with the fight or flight response, which is anytime we're put into a situation, whether that be trauma or um, any kind of emergency situation, our um, mind, um, automatically does a fight or flight so we either fight um, fight off the you know whatever is coming our way or we mm -hmm. run away from it we get ourselves out of it and um, so the so the world kind of knows it as the fight or flight response but when we're talking about trauma such as sexual assault there's also two more components which is the freeze response or the fawn response um, and so the freeze response is when the I mean brain just sends messages to the body to freeze and that's ultimately mm -hmm without going to, into a whole lot of science about it, is the, um, a way of surviving the situation. So again, talking specifically about sexual assault, that's a way to, um, to, that the brain is telling the body to survive it. And so um, that's what the freeze response, and that's the most common response with sexual assault. Um, so, and I think that that's important to have that information out there, because again, we're prone to thinking only about the fight or flight response. Whereas so, in, a, yeah. in a traumatic situation like a sexual assault, it's really common for someone to freeze. And it's just that comes from shock, that comes from fear, that comes from um, trauma. And that's just um, the body's natural way of you know, responding to, um, mm -hmm. to, to that situation. So no means no cannot even be present in that situation, right? Yeah, yeah that's where that comes from sometimes. So it, it used to be the big... Um, sexual assault, one of their slogans is like, no means no, which is, which is good because that is still true. You know, yes. the, the definition of no has not changed. Um, yes. so it's still very much true, but they're kind of straying away from saying that so much when mm -hmm. talking about sexual assault prevention, um, because sometimes there's an absence of no, because, yes. um, they're talking specifically about some sexual assaults, some sexual assaults are, um, involve alcohol or, um, drugs or substances mm -hmm. where, um, the ability to say no is not there. Um, and so that right. doesn't make it consensual. But so yes means yes. <laughs> yeah, so yes, right? yes, yes also means yes, no also means no. And so it's not, we're not, in, we're not just looking at sexual assault as, as he or she said no, um, right. and that wasn't respected. So we're no longer looking at it as just that. Um, it's also, it's consent is expanding in its definition and everything. Julia, yeah. do you wanna talk about the Thane response? The fawn. Fawn. Yeah. Fawn. <laughs> fawn. <laughs> the, the, the freeze was the third one that was added. And then recently, fawn was added to the responses. Mm -hmm. And that if um, the body's response to survival is by complying. So it could look as though um, not saying anything, but going through the motions to survive. Because there could be the fear of, I don't want to die, or the fear of mm -hmm. this hurt more if I say no or even like the shock of um if you know it's happening between two people who've known each other and are good friends and it could just be that I'm afraid of this actually being real or this being um just going 
horribly south, so I'm just going to go along with it because I can't understand what is happening and I'm just afraid and this is how I think I can survive and move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that is a common that um, I think is can be really hard to understand sometimes and really hard even to bring up in society where like kind of views are more black and white on sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yes means yes, but it can also turn into a no. Can right. Sometimes at all. Right. It's hard to, I think, to understand sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I think we're going to um, kind of head towards wrapping up here. Um, Catherine, something that we are going to try and ask all of our questions, all of our guests during this time um, is what is a good activity to do while social distancing? Yeah, why social distancing? Okay, yes. Um, well, you know, everybody has different situations at home, different amount of people that they're with, more than usual. Um, so you really have to look at your current environment. If you have any space, if you have any any property front and back, you know, how much are you safe to be where you're at? But regardless, look at your space and exercise. Exercise, I mean, it's known the endorphins are gonna help make a better feeling within yourself. If you're feeling like you're climbing a wall, try to exercise. Just try, even jumping jacks in place. Run in place. Uh, download something. Like there are tons of exercise videos out there. You could uh, put something on your phone, you know, or put something on the, you know, download it, whatever. And uh, you have outlets, even though they're not as exciting as when you have every, all your friends together or whatnot, or, or your normal routine, exercising is a, a really cool one. Now, if you have a lot of kids around, you know, maybe pull out that board game that's got all the dust on it. <laughs> bring it out and or, or go over a board game that you normally like to do um read a book that's a that's a pretty good outlet if you like to read some people don't like to read it's okay um but do something that um you feel you know that feeling when you like ah i got something done today that's a good feeling um but i do want to say every action you do counts with COVID-19, every action you choose to do makes a difference. And it may not make a difference directly on you, it'll make a difference on somebody else. That's what's so remarkable about this community worldwide event. It's happening to all of us and we're all trying to help prevent the spread. So every action when you're like, I'm gonna go crazy. And then you work out and you're like, okay, I feel a little better, but still, I feel like I'm going crazy. I want you to know that your actions are making a difference. Your choice of adhering to the recommendations mm -hmm. is making a difference. Your, because you wash your hands the minute you have to leave the house, wash them wherever you're at and then wash them back before, you know, the minute you get back in, you wash them. You're protecting people in which you love and you're also protecting the society in which you may not know. So. Your actions make a difference because we are all in this together. So, so as you as you go crazy, remember everybody's going crazy, but we're all doing it for the cause of each other. And it's really the selfless what you're doing. So I just want you to know that. That's a really good point to make that the people like we are making a difference by adhering to just what we're supposed to be doing and Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah. Well, I think that we're just gonna um, wrap up and that's all the time we have for today. But Catherine, right. thank you so much for taking time out of thank what you. Sure is an extremely busy schedule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for meeting with us today and being our first guest on yeah, I'm so glad. our show that still remains nameless. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so Coffee talk, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so th yeah, thank you very much, and we will um, talk to you later. Okay, uh, thank you. You guys have a great rest of the day and weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.
So if you want more information or to contact Catherine, we're going to put her information up on the screen so that you can contact her in the Facebook links that she talked to you about the Nottoway County Health Services. So thank you guys for viewing. And like I said, the goal is to um, put a, an episode out at the beginning of every week. So probably Monday or Tuesday. And also we're hoping to have um, a guest for most of those times. And again, it's just to um, provide information to you, to link you to resources, and then just to remind you all that we are still here for you. Um, you can call our hotline. Our hotline remains 24-7. And um, I have a work Facebook account that you can add me to. Um, and we can video chat or we can talk on the phone, whatever, whatever you want to do. And so, um, and we're still helping with order protections as well. So our services have not gone away. Um, it just, they just look a little bit different right now. So, but we just wanted to be putting some positive stuff out there too. And, um, and I'm also providing the community tour to um, what resources are still available as well. All right. Well, I think that was a good episode. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Catherine's awesome. She's really great. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to finish this cup of lemonade and um, yeah, tea. start the day. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, Julia. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> For more information on the Nottoway County Health Department, visit their Facebook page at Nottoway County Health Department or visit the website at www.nottowaypublichealth.org. Information contained in this video about sexual assault was cited from Missouri Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence 2019 issue of SV 101, Understanding and Responding to Sexual Violence. To find a copy of this issue, visit www.mocadsv.org. And as always, follow us on our Facebook page at North Star Advocacy Center. You can follow us on Twitter at North Star underscore AC. Or because we're quarantined, you can go watch our videos on our YouTube page. Just type in North Star Advocacy Center.